Welcome to the Paranormal Deep Dive from Real Ghost Stories Online and the Grave Talks. In the heart of New York City, towering above the bustling streets of Manhattan, stands a building that has borne witness to some of the most legendary moments in artistic history. The Chelsea Hotel, or simply the Chelsea, is more than just a hotel. It is an icon, a symbol of bohemian freedom, creativity, and for some, tragedy. Built in 1883, it has been home to some of the most brilliant minds of the 20th century, writers, artists, musicians, all of whom contributed to its legendary status. But beneath the creative genius that once thrived within its walls, there is a darker, more unsettling legacy. Tragic deaths, unexplained events, and whispers of hauntings have turned the Chelsea into a place where the past continues to haunt the present. From the moment it was constructed, the Chelsea Hotel was different. Designed by architect Philip Hubert, the Chelsea's distinctive Gothic revival and Queen Anne-style façade set it apart from the rapidly growing city around it. Initially built as a cooperative apartment complex for artists and intellectuals, the Chelsea was intended to be a self-sustaining community where creativity could flourish. It was, after all, the dawn of the Gilded Age in America, and the idea of artists living communally, sharing ideas, and supporting one another was seen as revolutionary. But the cooperative didn't last. By 1905, the Chelsea had been converted into a hotel, and over the next several decades, it became a haven for writers, painters, filmmakers, and musicians seeking inspiration in the chaos of New York City. Mark Twain, Dylan Thomas, Arthur C. Clarke, Bob Dylan, Janis Joplin, and Patti Smith are just a few of the luminaries who have called the Chelsea home. And while its walls echoed with creativity, they would also soon bear witness to events far more tragic. Perhaps no death at the Chelsea is as infamous as that of Welsh poet Dylan Thomas. In 1953, Thomas was staying at the Chelsea while on a speaking tour in the United States. On November 3rd, after a night of heavy drinking, Thomas returned to his hotel room and, according to reports, declared, I've had 18 straight whiskeys. I think that's the record. He fell into a coma and was taken to St. Vincent's Hospital, where he died a few days later. Officially, his death was attributed to pneumonia, but his hard living had taken its toll. In the years since, guests who have stayed in the room where Thomas resided have reported strange phenomena. Some claim to hear the faint sound of a man coughing late at night, while others report the unmistakable scent of whiskey lingering in the air. The Chelsea's reputation as a site of tragedy didn't end with Thomas. Perhaps the most notorious event in the hotel's history occurred in 1978, when Sex Pistols bassist Sid Vicious and his girlfriend, Nancy Spungen, took up residence in Room 100. The punk rock scene of the late 1970s was as raw and chaotic as the relationship between Sid and Nancy and their time at the Chelsea was marked by drug use and violence. On the morning of October 12th, 1978, Nancy Spungen was found dead in the bathroom of their hotel room, stabbed in the abdomen. Sid Vicious was arrested and charged with her murder, though he claimed to have no memory of the incident. He died of a heroin overdose just a few months later, before the case could be brought to trial. Room 100, where Nancy Spungen lost her life, has since become one of the most infamous rooms at the Chelsea, though the room was eventually remodeled and renumbered. Guests who have stayed in the surrounding area report unsettling experiences. Some have described sudden cold spots, as if the temperature drops drastically without warning. Others claim to have heard a woman's voice crying out in the middle of the night. There are even reports of shadowy figures moving through the hallways, figures that disappear when approached. For those who believe, the tragic end of Sid and Nancy left an indelible mark on the Chelsea, one that can still be felt today. 
But the Chelsea's ghostly reputation isn't limited to just the famous and infamous. Over the years, many others have met their end within its walls, some by their own hand. Several suicides have taken place at the hotel, contributing to its dark mystique. One such case involved a man who threw himself from the rooftop, plummeting to his death on the pavement below. In the aftermath, guests and staff have reported seeing a figure standing at the edge of the roof late at night, staring down at the street as if contemplating the same tragic fate. There is another ghost that some believe haunts the halls of the Chelsea, a child. Guests have reported hearing the sound of a child crying, echoing through the long corridors, though no child is ever seen. Others claim to have heard the playful sound of a child laughing, or the soft patter of tiny footsteps running down the hallways. Whether these reports are the result of overactive imaginations or something more, the presence of the child remains one of the hotel's most enduring mysteries. As the years passed, the Chelsea Hotel became more than just a place to stay. It became a symbol of the counterculture, a place where creative minds could come together, free from the constraints of the outside world. But with that, freedom came chaos, and the hotel became a magnet for both brilliance and madness. The walls of the Chelsea bear the marks of its artistic residence, but they also seem to carry the weight of the tragedies that have unfolded within them. The hotel's haunted reputation grew as more and more guests and staff began reporting strange occurrences. Lights flickering on and off without explanation, the sound of disembodied voices echoing through the hallways, and doors opening and closing by themselves became common reports. Some have even claimed to see full-bodied apparitions, figures dressed in old-fashioned clothing, walking down the corridors as if still trapped in time. These ghostly figures never interact with the living disappearing before they can be approached. But their presence is felt by all who encounter them. One of the most common paranormal experiences at the Chelsea involves the elevators. Many guests have reported stepping into an elevator only to find it behaving erratically, moving to the wrong floors, stopping abruptly, or opening to reveal an empty hallway, despite the buttons pressed. Some believe the elevators are haunted by the spirits of those who died within the hotel, trapped in an endless loop, unable to leave. Others suggest that the elevators, like the hotel itself, are simply unpredictable, another layer to the building's eccentric charm. For decades, the Chelsea Hotel was a cultural hub, a place where artists could live and work in an atmosphere of unrestrained creativity. Andy Warhol shot his iconic film, Chelsea Girls Within Its Walls, in 1966, a documentary-style exploration of the hotel's bohemian inhabitants. Writers such as Arthur Miller, William S. Burroughs, and Allen Ginsberg all spent time at the Chelsea, and their works were undoubtedly influenced by their time there. Arthur C. Clarke even wrote parts of 2001, a space odyssey while staying at the hotel, further cementing its status as a place of inspiration for creative minds. But for all its artistic brilliance, the Chelsea could not escape the inevitability of change. In 2011, the hotel was sold to developers, and its new owners began a series of renovations that would forever alter the building's character. The renovations were met with resistance from longtime residents and admirers of the hotel, who feared that the Chelsea's bohemian spirit would be lost in the process. Despite efforts to preserve its legacy, much of the hotel's original charm has been replaced by modern amenities and updated decor. Yet, even as the physical building changes, the ghosts of the past remain. Today, the Chelsea Hotel is still a functioning hotel though much of its artistic community has dispersed. The rooms have been modernized, and the once vibrant murals that adorned the hallways have been painted over. But the memories of those who lived and died within its walls continue to linger.
Guests and staff still report strange occurrences, and the hotel's reputation as a haunted location persists. Those who believe in the supernatural say that the renovations have only stirred up the spirits, disrupting the peace of those who remain. The Chelsea Hotel stands as a testament to the power of art, creativity, and the enduring influence of the past. For more than a century, it has been a place where the brightest minds of their generation gathered, seeking inspiration, solace, and escape. But it has also been a place of darkness, where lives have been cut short, and where the line between genius and madness has often blurred. The hotel's haunted reputation is a reflection of that history, a reminder that even in a city as alive as New York, the past can never be fully forgotten. As the lights of Manhattan continue to shine brightly outside its doors, the Chelsea remains a place where history and the supernatural coexist, a place where the living and the dead walk side by side. Whether you come seeking artistic inspiration or a brush with the unknown, the Chelsea Hotel offers both, wrapped in a history as complex and layered as the city itself. And for those who are brave enough to stay the night, there is always the chance that they, too, might encounter one of the many spirits who still call the Chelsea home. Want to dig deeper in the paranormal deep dive? Press subscribe now wherever you download podcasts and catch brand new paranormal deep dives every single day from Real Ghost Stories Online and the Grave Talks podcast.